On today's episode, we are gonna be doing some high-end DIY decor ideas. So let's get started on our first DIY, which is actually gonna be for mainly my dining area, which is attached to my kitchen. So we're fudging a little bit. <laughs> but this piece that I am going to attempt to DIY, I have seen trending all over Instagram, and it's very expensive to get the whole thing. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And and we are going to be doing it for pennies on the dollar. But for this one, we're gonna need to go outside and get powerful, but I don't want you to be scared because this is a perfect beginner DIY project, super easy. So the first thing we're gonna do is I went to the home improvement store and picked out this very rustic four x four. It even has some dings and nicks in it already, which is good because we're gonna distress it anyway. So it's already got a beginning start on it and it was pretty inexpensive. This I believe is six feet tall and it was around $8. We are gonna cut this in half so you could actually make two of what we're making. Make one for a friend and then make one for yourself. <laughs> and then, so that will make each one about $4-ish for this portion of the project. So all we're gonna do is use our miter saw to make one simple straight cut. You can totally do this, I promise. And let's just do it. We're gonna mark it to 36 inches and make a cut. I started right in the middle because I, I found center because everything was gonna go off of that. I didn't wanna start incorrectly. So we're gonna start with center. Then we're gonna take our carpenter square and make all of the marks. I I think it's about an inch to an inch and a half, but we just use the carpenter square to measure it out. It we want two on each end. We don't want to finish it with one. We want it to be a little beefier on the outside. So that means we need to start with two on the center and it will just go two, one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way down. And so to make that easier, we are gonna mark it on one side over here. So we're gonna just use this carpenter square to make all of the drill marks because we can just line it up. For all of our measurements, we either do exactly in the center or for the one where we have two, we measure that one inch from each side. And then we just get all of our markings there. Then we are ready to drill. This is where a good quality drill comes into play because it really does make a difference. And then you take a wood boring bit. It's also called a spade. I used a three quarter inch spade and looking back a seven eight inch one would probably have worked a little bit better because I did end up having to take that and make the holes a little bit bigger in the end to make it work for what we are doing. And then we just started drilling all the way down. Drill, 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 drill and it went really, really quick. <laughs> a good drill will help with that. Then once we are done drilling, then I took my shop back and vacuumed up all of the drilled out wood pieces and cleaned it up a little bit. Now it's time to distress it. I really wanted it to have a rustic vibe, like I said, and the piece of wood that we already had, had that going on. In fact, one corner of it kind of had some live edge on it a little bit. And so I kind of wanted to mimic that on the other side. So I just took a chisel and chiseled down the other side and it was imperfect and that didn't matter at all because that's the look we were going for. And then I did that on both of the end pieces. And then I went about really distressing the whole thing, taking a hammer and banging it, taking a screw and hammering that into it and just making it look really rough and beat up. And that was the look that we were going for. And then once we had it all distressed like we wanted, I took my sander to it just to kind of wear it down, making sure that all of the corners were rounded down, um, sanding it good enough that there's not any like slivers or harsh things that we could get a, an owie from. <laughs> an owie. <laughs> yeah, I must be a mom. <laughs> Anyways, um, really wearing that down. Now, my original plan for this was to stain it or add some other element to it and seal it. But after looking at it, 
I really loved the look with it in its raw, unfinished state because it really had a, a kind of driftwood vibe and I loved it and I decided to leave it unfinished and raw. If you don't like this look, feel free to stain it, feel free to seal it, do whatever you want, but there was something really cool about it in this raw, unfinished state. I think that that's something that we're seeing in some of the dough bowls and things like that. But if you have like a brand new, fresh looking piece of lumber, I'd probably add some kind of stain or sealer or something to it. So then all you need to do is load it up with your candles. So I ordered my candles off of Amazon and it was a little bit more than Dollar Tree, but what it did for me is save me from going to Dollar Tree to Dollar Tree to find enough candles for my candle piece. To me, that was worth a little bit extra. And the cost of 48 candles was just $32 and you just load them up. Now, the ones that I've been seeing on Instagram were varying candle heights. This doesn't have that very Variation. that will cost you a little bit more money to get the variation in heights and you'll have to really seek these out. The candles that I used, I think were 10 inches tall. That's probably on the shorter end of what I would recommend you do. So if you can find some that are 12, 14, 16 in there and you can mix them up, you can do whatever color candles you want. You could switch it out by the season and it looks really, really cool. And this is such a cool thing that could work on your dining room table coming up for all of the festivities. And it, it has a lot of flexibility, a lot of possibilities. And in the end, our base only cost us $4 because the whole big piece was $8. So I've got enough to do a second one. And so $4 for the base. Hello, that is amazing. But wait, there's more with this DIY. I also bought these little test tubes off of Amazon. Now I didn't get enough for my entire length because I didn't know how many holes we'd have. So you're gonna need to order some more of these if you like this idea. You shove these in the holes where you'd put the candles and you have a whole bunch of bud vases. This is something really cool that you could switch out and use fall stems or you could switch out and do Christmas stems or you can switch out and do spring stems. So many, so many options. Uh, this just gives you a whole another avenue to go down as far as decorating this. So you could use it as a candle base or you could use it as a test tube base and switch out the kind of stems that you put in those test tubes. And you have a really versatile, very high end designer looking piece of decor with so many possibilities. I just love that. <laughs> but what do you think of this DIY? Our next kitchen decor item is so super easy. This is as beginner of DIY as it comes, but it really does make an impact. So I ordered a set of these airtight jars off of Amazon, but you can find them at Hobby Lobby. You can find them at Ikea. These kind of jars are readily available, but they are really good for storing your baking items with, especially the sugars and stuff. Your brown sugar, you don't want it to dry out. You want it to stay fresh, and this is a really good way to do it. Now, I love labeling things. I don't always get around to it, but I, I think it's really really pretty aesthetic, but it's also functional. So you know what's in the jar because sometimes if you're putting things in a clear jar and it says baking soda and baking powder, you might not know which is which at first glance. So this really helps in that, but it's also beautiful. So what I did is I was going to originally design my own labels and offer those to you, but I came across one from a website, which I will link in my description box, that already provided a free printable and they were beautiful. And I'm like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I just went ahead and printed out her things. Now, what I'm printing it on is special paper. Now, the way she did it in her tutorial was a little bit different. And this way I feel like is a little bit 
easier. <laughs> and so I love that. So we are going to print it out on my new favorite find. Well, it's not really new. I've been using it for a little bit on my channel, but it might be new to you, water slide paper. It's very affordable. You can get it off of Amazon and it is so much fun. So all you need to do is print out these free labels onto this water slide paper. Then you're gonna take it outside and you're gonna do triple thick crystal clear glaze. That is a tongue twister. <laughs> but this is the stuff that I highly recommend. You're gonna spray it on the paper and you're gonna do three coats every 15 minutes. So one coat, wait 15 minutes, one coat, 15 minutes, so on and so forth. And then you're gonna wanna make sure it is fully dry. Then all we're gonna do is take out a paper cutter and cut out these labels um, to the ones that you're gonna use. I'm not gonna use all of these labels, but you'll have them ready to go if you decide to add more jars to your collection. We are going to submerge the label in water for about 30 to 60 seconds. And you'll know when it's ready when it starts to separate from the backing and slide around. That's where the water slide effect comes in. Then you're gonna place your label where you want it on the jar. And I would recommend making sure that all of the um, the little latches face in the same directions. If you're OCD, that will drive you crazy. <laughs> so even if you're not OCD, you would prefer it that way. And then you're gonna place the label where you want and then gently slide out the backing and then make sure everything is smooth, dry it up a little bit and then let that fully dry. And then you can fill it up with all of your baked goods from your sh brown sugars, white sugars, flowers, whatever you're wanting to put in these jars and put the labels on and it looks so beautiful, right? And it was as simple as printing something out on your printer, spraying a couple of coats of a clear glaze, submerging it in water, putting it on, super easy project and it has fantastic, beautiful high-end results that I think you'll love. I, I love it. I love the way this looks. What do you think? If you're enjoying this content, please consider sticking around a while by hitting that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it and I would love to have you a part of the DIY Niner family. So next up, we are gonna be making a recipe book stand. We are gonna be using some unconventional items. For this, we're also gonna get a little bit powerful, so meet me back outside. This is what I found at Hobby Lobby, and we want it to sit kind of on an angle. And so for the base, I decided to use a deck spindle that I pick up from Lowe's. Um, you might have seen these on my channel a time or two. <laughs> so here's the two different sizes that I use most frequently. This one's a little bit smaller, a little bit skinnier, and this one's just a little bit beefier. This is the one that I think we're gonna go with. We are gonna cut it off right here, and then up here we are gonna put it on, I'm gonna try a 37 and a half degree angle on this part, and so we will make those two cuts, and it will be Super easy. And as the light startled our eyes, we let go of disguise. The next thing that I did was I laid our plaque face down on the table and then I added some wood glue and then I added a little bit of weight to hold it in place while it dried. I shot in a few finish nails from the front side. We also needed to add a base. We attached that to the center. We marked where our center was. We added some wood glue and shot some finish nails from the underside of that. And we let that fully dry. Now we needed something for our cookbook to sit up against and so it wouldn't slide off the plaque. So I used one of these wood slats that I got at the Dollar Tree. They have some great wood slats and wood plaques now in their wood section and this was the perfect um, depth and it was a little bit long so all we did is cut that down to size and then we nailed that into the bottom of the plaque and that will give us a little lip for our recipe book to sit on. And then we added some wood putty, let that dry, and then we sanded all of that out. And then I decided I did want to stain this one, so I took some Kona 
brown gel stain, which is a color that is very close to my kitchen cabinets and some other wood pieces that I have in this area. And I gave that really good coverage and we let that dry. And then once that was dry, I wanted to seal it. So I took a matte sealer and sprayed it on and let that fully dry. It would be beautiful just to display out on your kitchen countertop with a recipe book open to a fun recipe. I know that we're not to the holiday season yet, but I really think this would be a fantastic gift idea. So put that in your back pocket and save it for later or get started on it now because it is such a great look. Love it in my kitchen and I think anybody would love it in their kitchen. But what do you think? Dreamy. Next up, I set out to make a DIY paper towel holder because the one that I have is pretty industrial looking. It's silver. It really doesn't go in my kitchen. It was just something that I picked up on a whim at the store and I just needed something and so I just grabbed it. I have never really liked it so I wanted to do something that was a little bit more designed to the nines and this is a very simple project that you can easily do. Yes again it uses a little bit of power tools but I am bound and determined to turn you into a DIY goddess or god and I just really think that when you use power tools, it really opens up a whole world of possibilities and the things that you can make are just amazing and it's a lot of fun and you take a lot of pride in what you built. Anyways, this is just a super simple project. This is a Dollar Tree toilet bowl plunger and it is going to work perfectly for our paper towel holder. So all we need to do is get rid of the screws and cut this down shorter. I measured it. Our paper paper towel holder is 11 inches so I want to cut it to about 11 and a half inches. That's right about there. So we'll make that quick cut. Later on I, I went back in and cut off the top because I felt like it was a little bit rounded and it needed to be flat and so I just sliced off a little bit off the top. So ultimately the, the, the toilet plunger stick should end up being about 11 and a quarter inches. Then we're gonna get a seven inch round. I picked this one up at Hobby Lobby. These are really easy to come by. You can get them at Walmart, you can get them at Michael's, you can get them pretty much anywhere. You need some sort of wood round. Then we're gonna drill out a hole in the bottom of our toilet plunger. And then we're also gonna drill a hole in the center of our wood round. And then we are gonna drive a screw through the bottom of the wood round and into the bottom of the toilet plunger. What we are gonna do is I grabbed a little bag of finials at Hobby Lobby, it had three finials in it for $1.50. It's such a good deal. And we're gonna use two of those. We're gonna and put one of them on the bottom base and we're going to put one on the top part of the toilet plunger. We're going to use a little bit of wood glue to hold those in permanently and then if you can't physically push it down um, you want to might want to check the size of the hole. If if it's a good size, you want it to be nice and snug so you'll just take your hammer and tap that down into place and it will work out great. Then we are going to drill out a hole for a finial on the very edge of your wood round. It doesn't really matter because it's circular, so just pick a spot, get to the edge, and drill out a hole. So with that all assembled, now we're gonna spray paint it in a matte black spray paint. We're gonna do at least two coats. You just wanna make sure it has good coverage. Let that fully dry. Then we're gonna use some Grecian Gold Rub and Buff, and we are gonna apply that with a small paintbrush and we're gonna get in all of the nooks and crannies on the two finials. So that gives us a really kind of high-end finished look with that gold accent and we're gonna let that fully dry. And that is it. Now you're ready to put a paper towel roll onto this and use it. And it is so much prettier than my dorky, clunky one that I had before. It just feels a little bit higher style and we have like $5 into it. It's super, super inexpensive, but it definitely has a high end feel. 
I love how this looks. I'm just super, super happy with it. And I'm so glad to replace my other one. Well, I hope you enjoyed those kitchen DIYs. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right here. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family and to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you once again that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.